I had recently come to this big city in hopes of someday seeing my man, Mark, with whom I was not officially married. I myself grew up in a small town where everyone knew each other, and that's where I met Mark. At first we decided to live together, to get to know each other better, whether we were suitable for family life, and then I got pregnant. The pregnancy was a big surprise for us. We hadn't planned it. But Mark said that it was fate. We should be together and become parents. Pregnancy was hard. There was severe toxicosis and then a difficult labor. Recovery after the birth was long and at first all the care of the baby fell on Mark's shoulders and he was very happy about the birth of his son. One evening, Mark put the baby down and told me that his father lived in another city and they hadn't spoken in a long time. He had left his hometown right after his mother died and he blamed his father for her death. The quarrel between them was so strong that Mark even changed his last name. And now that Mark had a son of his own, he began to regret doing that to his father. I saw Mark's anguish. So I insisted that he go and make peace with his father. His father needed to know that he had become a grandfather and had a grandson. Mark hesitated for a long time, but finally agreed and went to see his father. Upon my arrival in my hometown, Mark called me. He planned to stay in town for the first time since my father was out of town on a business trip. I missed Mark. And he missed us. Wait for me a little longer, he said. I want to see my dad and apologize to him in person. You know how excited he was when I called him. I have to wait for him and let him know he has a grandson. I can't tell him over the phone, Mark told me. The call stopped and I couldn't reach him because his phone was disconnected. I didn't know what to think. Maybe Mark had decided to leave me with the baby after meeting the father. I wasn't his wife, so he was free to do whatever he wanted. However, I didn't believe Mark could do that because he loved me and my son. Therefore, I decided to follow Mark and find out why he did it. The city we arrived in with the baby was bustling with life, but anxiety weighed heavily on my heart. I was alone in a huge metropolis with a baby and little money, without a job. I had no idea how to find Mark's father since I didn't even know his last name or address. I berated myself for acting rashly, but the memory of Mark made my heart ache. The feeling of anxiety and uncertainty never left me. I chose to remain in this city despite the challenges. I stayed with my child in a small, comfortable hotel for the first time. A friendly and sociable young woman served my room. During our conversation, she informed me that affordable housing and a kindergarten were available near the city center. The maid offered to assist me, and she helped me find affordable housing and a kindergarten for my child. After renting a place to live and enrolling my child in kindergarten, I began my job search. I sent out resumes and waited for responses from potential employers. In the meantime, I explored the city, hoping to run into Mark. After picking up my child from kindergarten and returning home, I saw an advertisement on the door of a nearby cafe that they needed a cleaner. I decided to answer the ad since I was tired of the long search for a job. Although it was not an easy job, I was grateful for the opportunity to earn money. The next morning, I talked to the cafe manager and was hired as a cleaner. I was very happy about it, even though the pay was not high. In the evenings and on weekends, I often walked around the city with my child. However, I never met Mark. I was no longer certain that Mark had come to this city. Now, I had nowhere to retreat or wait for help. 
I had to continue with my life. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. Trouble never comes alone. I was at work when the kindergarten called and asked me to pick up my child. My son had a fever and a sore throat. I dropped everything and ran to the kindergarten. The child needed care and treatment, and I had to stay with him during the treatment. However, my manager at the cafe refused to accommodate my needs and fired me from my job. I lost my job and income, making things unbearably hard. However, my child gradually began to recover, and we started taking small walks in the park. Despite my financial struggles and the upcoming rent payment, I had to focus on my son's recovery before looking for a job again. While my son was playing on the lawn in the park, I sat on a bench and cried with hopelessness. I felt completely defenseless. An elderly man sat down on the bench, dressed simply but dignified. What is your problem? Is there anything I can help you with? He asked me. As I turned in his direction, I saw that he was addressing me sincerely and with kindness. This was the only person at that moment who had reached out to me to help me. Without noticing how, but I told him everything that had happened to me. That I had come to this city looking for my husband, how I had lost my job, and that I had a child to take care of. As I finished my story, I felt some relief. I felt a little better. During the whole time I was telling my story, the older man did not interrupt me, but listened attentively and nodded. I was very grateful to him for that. I had to go home with my baby, and I started to say goodbye to the man. When suddenly he said to me, I would like to offer you a job. A job? Where? I asked. I'm offering you a job at my house. I need an assistant to clean the house. I live alone. My house is big. I can't manage. I also offer you and your son to move in with me. I will provide you with a room. I will pay you well. Do you agree? He asked. Yes, of course. But I can't start work now. My son hasn't fully recovered, I told him. I understand everything. You go home now, pack your things, and tomorrow I will pick you up and take you to my place. Just give me your address, he said. I told him my address, took the baby in my arms, and we went home. The help I had been waiting for had finally arrived. In the morning, as promised, an elderly man came to pick us up. He helped us put our things in the car and took us to his house. His house was really big. He showed me my son and I to our room. It was a big, sunny, warm and cozy room. It had a new crib for my son, which he had bought after our conversation. I cried at what I saw. And the man patted me on the shoulder and said, I beg you not to cry. Your child sees you in this condition and starts crying too. Until your son is fully recovered, don't even start working. Take time for him now. I have left some money on the table. Buy the necessary medicines for your son as well as groceries. Right now, your son needs good nutrition. Thank you for all you do. I am grateful to you. With tears in my eyes, I said, Everything will be fine with you. I will leave for work now, and you buy everything you need. The stores here are not far away. And then rest, he said. After he left, I walked over to the table where the money the man had left behind was lying. I had to do everything necessary, so I dressed my son and went outside with him. After a little walk and familiarizing ourselves with the territory, we went to the pharmacy and the store. Having bought everything we needed, we headed home. And at home, together with my son, 
We started unpacking our things. And on the nightstand next to my bed, I put a picture of the three of us. Mark, me, and our son. Where are you, my Mark? I said to myself. Then having put my son to bed, I said about preparing supper. In the evening, when Sir Albert came in from work, I had everything ready on the table. He was delighted and offered to dine with me. I wanted to refuse, but he said that he had been eating alone for a long time and would be glad if we kept him company. I agreed. I felt sorry for him, for he was lonely. My son quickly improved, and his laughter filled the house. Sir Albert became very attached to my son. They spent a lot of time together, playing, walking, watching cartoons, and reading books. One evening, after reading another book, Sir Albert saw that his son had fallen asleep. I wanted to take him to his crib myself, but Sir Albert asked my permission to do it himself. I allowed it. He gently picked up the baby, cradled him, and carried him into the room. I was washing the dishes when suddenly I heard Sir Albert's footsteps behind me. I turned to see that he was holding a photograph of us, which was on my bedside table. Tears glistened in his eyes and he held the picture to his chest. I looked at him and couldn't understand a thing. My girl, your mark, this is my own son. He said, I do not understand you, Sir Albert, I replied, and tears ran from my eyes. Sir Albert sat down at the table and asked me to sit down beside him. My girl, I have been looking for you. Mark, before he died, told me what town you lived in. I went there, but you were gone, and no one knew in which direction. I was desperate, he said. Sir Albert, are you saying that you are Mark's father? Mark is dead, but why? I don't understand. The tears prevented me from speaking further. Sir Albert got up and poured me a glass of water and continued. Mark called me and told me he was wrong. He wanted to apologize. I was glad to hear from him since I hadn't seen him for so long. But I was on a business trip at the time, so I asked him to wait for me. He agreed and told me that he had very important news for me. I was counting the minutes until I could see my mark. He and I met. He told me that you were the one who made him come and make up with me, and that I was a grandfather. I was so happy. I have a son again. I have a daughter-in-law, and I have a grandson. I really wanted to see you. Mark and I were supposed to go together to pick you up. I sat waiting for him at home. He was late. I called him to see where he was. He said he was close to home. I went out to start the car. Mark was crossing the road at the crosswalk. Suddenly, a car jumped out and hit Mark at full speed with a drunk driver behind the wheel. I ran up to my son. He was still alive. A little audibly, he told me to find you and your son and take care of you, that he loved you. He died in my arms, and his phone was broken and I couldn't call you, he told me. I couldn't say anything. Tears rolled down my cheeks as I listened to Sir Albert's words. I couldn't believe that Mark was no longer with us. Sir Albert, I don't know how to express my gratitude. You saved me and my baby at the most difficult time of our lives, I said, trying to hold back the tears. Sir Albert hugged me and said, it was my son's last wish, and I will do my best to take care of you and my grandson. We will live as a family, and I will love you both as I loved Mark. I felt immense gratitude towards this man. He not only found me and my son, but also offered us a home and care. A lot of time has passed since then. 
Sir Albert not only saved us but also became a loving grandfather who cares for us as if we were his own family. Life gradually improved, and each new day brought something good. My son grew up under Sir Albert's tutelage, learning to read, write, love nature, and care for others. I found a job teaching literature at a nearby university. Sir Albert supported me in everything, and I thanked fate every day for bringing us together.